All right, folks, hour number two of Football Full Circle. Thanks for being here with us on this uh, weekend. I hope your uh, July weekends are going as slowly as possible before you head back into the work week. George and I are here to take the AFC South a little bit slowly, spend an hour on it, taking you through all the odds, obviously changes in personnel, big ones in certain instances, and try to figure out exactly what this division ends up looking like. So, George, the odds look very different than where they were a couple of months ago, uh, just taking it from the top on the AFC South. The Titans were the favorites, sort of pre-draft process, and Matty Ice comes over. Those odds started to change pretty dramatically as we got through free agency, and here you see the odds according to DraftKings. Minus 125, the Colts favored. The Titans next in the mix at plus 170. The Jaguars at seven and one, and then the Texans at thirty to one. The Texans are the longest shot in the league to win their own division. I think the Seahawks are the only ones in. No, sorry, the Falcons are the only ones in that range, twenty-five to one. The Seahawks are sixteen to one. So let's just take it from the top. The Colts are now the clear favorite to win. Not a blowout, but that's a pretty clear favorite, especially considering that the Titans were the favorites just two months ago. What are your initial thoughts as to how this board looks? Do you think that's the order of finish in this division? Yeah, I do think the Colts are the, uh, the best team in the division. I think they're the best overall team. To, uh, and they traded with Matt Ryan, and the, especially the price you paid for him. Very nice. Very nice what they did here. Uh, you look at them, I mean, we think Matt Ryan's a better quarterback than Carson Wentz, right? More, more likely a better leader. Uh, we, we never hear very nice things about Carson Wentz as far as his locker room stuff. Uh, no team has ever really come out and support this guy all that much. But you got Matt Ryan. You got a decent backup in Nick Foles if it gets that uh, far. Jonathan Taylor, maybe it's McCaffrey. Maybe it's this guy. Maybe it's that guy. But he's one of the best running backs in the league, if not the best running back in the league. Yeah, I would like to see them get that next addition to their wide receiver core. Can Pittman be that guy? Pittman, Pierce, Campbell, uh, you know, tight end. Cox, you know, okay. That's where their issue lies. They don't have that passing attack. I don't think this will be a team, Mike, that's built to come from behind. You know, they, they get down quickly 10, 14 points. Yeah, I think they'll have some issues here. But they're a good football team. The offensive line, still, I would say, above average. Maybe not as good as it once was uh, a year or two ago where they really had some, you know, really nice players. They were still led by Quentin Nelson, a really good player here. The defense is solid all over the place. They don't have any star players as far as, though, you know, the Khalil Max or the Aaron Donalds are going to go kill the quarterback, but they don't have any obvious weaknesses either. So I think for this division and with the step back that Tennessee has taken, yeah, I think they have a leaders. And George mentioned the compensation for the Matt Ryan trade. You could probably start there. Considering we just came off a week in which Baker Mayfield got traded for a fifth round pick, that could be a fourth round pick next year. Matt Ryan got traded for a third round pick. He's got a lot of salary, obviously, that you have to contend with, but he's only under his contract for the next two years. He's $36 million in overall salary this year, dead money and otherwise, but the Falcons paid most of that dead money. So next year, Matt Ryan's on the books for, uh, let's see, yeah, it's still a big number. It's still $30, 21000000 million will be the cap hit as we welcome in a radio audience talking about the AFC South, AFC South divisional odds, uh, and we'll break down each team throughout the next hour. So for those of you on Sirius XM, appreciate you listening and everywhere else. Thanks for checking in uh, to George and Mike on football full circle. So it's a big, it's, it's a fairly big cap number for a 37, 38 year old quarterback, George, but these cap numbers are all funny money now anyway. And to get Matt Ryan for a third round pick when you are a contender and I think pushes you forward, it's pretty reasonable compensation. Oh, agreed. Absolutely agreed. I may not be the biggest Matt Ryan guy, but Matt Ryan's an NFL quarterback, a good NFL quarterback. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, and he has made a great move here. Probably the best quarterback, I mean – uh, Philip Rivers. I think I would want a Matt Ryan. This, uh, uh I think oh, I'd prefer God. Uh, God. Ryan over Rivers. Rivers was pretty, yeah, uh, he was pretty noodle armed in that year with uh, Indianapolis. There, he didn't have the uh, the strength there to get the ball down the field. Obviously, he's not better than Andrew Luck, of course not. But uh, you know, I think they've done a good job here. A guy who can, I, I said, I expect Indianapolis to win this division. Do I think they can so beat the big boys? 
No, I don't think they can beat the big boys. All right, they're not going to beat the I... Bills. They're not going to beat. Um, you know, I don't know if they could be anybody in the, uh, the, uh, the AFC West whoever comes out of there, but I think he can make them competitive with them. I said, I think, uh, that's really all they can ask for at this point. They still needed their quarterback of the future. They still got to find that. I don't know how many more years Ryan has left. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's fair. And we're going to go through each and every team. We'll start on the other side of this. We'll probably keep talking, uh, Colts on the other side of this and then, uh, we'll we'll switch over to the Titans and and obviously Jaguars and Texans, uh, whatever it is we have to say about them. But you have win totals to contend with, even if we don't think that these teams are viable to win the division or make the playoffs. We have win totals to contend with, and you can bet unders all different types of things that when you talk about the futures market and the NFL market in general, you have to be comfortable with. You can talk about overs and and uh, trying to bet favorites as much as you want. But the reality is when you're trying to make money in the NFL market, you have to get comfortable with unders and underdogs. And we'll talk more about the AFC South after this. We're going to have the Titans next. We'll circle back to the Colts in a bit, but it's the Titans up next on the grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game. Take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Betting above the rim. Man, man, that team gonna be nice this year. You know, when you got John Wall, you bring back, you know, PG-13. You get Kawhi. Now, Lord knows Kawhi be acting like Kawhi, and we never know what we gonna get out of him. But Kawhi Leonard, when he's at his best, that is a team that could definitely, you know, make the playoffs and make a one toward the Western Conference Finals if healthy. Betting above the rim. Fantasy Sports Today. Yeah, I think the key thing for this week is to wait to fill it out fully until qualifying takes place. Because again, we want to skew towards drivers starting further back. Those guys are going to have big potential here because you should be able to make passes. There should be a lot of chaos during this race, which does lend itself towards drivers starting further back having a big edge. So in general, our preference should be to use drivers starting further back. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Welcome 
talk about the Tennessee Titans. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Colts, and George gave his uh, overall thoughts on the division, but let's dive into the Titans. We talked about them in the first hour in relation to the Derrick Henry props and how we think he could get there. But this was a shakeup, George, of personnel this offseason. They trade A.J. Brown, which, look, I, I don't like the trade at all, but I think it became clear to John Robinson, Mike Vrabel, and anybody else in the organization that in order to keep A.J. Brown, you were going to have to pay him in excess of $20 million a year. In an offense, which I think has lost confidence in Ryan Tannehill as his play has declined from when they gave him the big money a couple of years ago. And I can understand the logic in saying, like, we're going to pay A.J. Brown nearly $25 million a year. We can't even get him the ball that much because our quarterback isn't good enough. And we're going to tie our hands with salary of an offense that isn't going to function in that way. That being said, they get the first round pick for him. They use another wide receiver who's now third on the depth chart and is dealing with physical issues, asthma, allergies, and everything else. The Titans knew about it. I think it's all good. I hope Traylon Burks crushes from here on out. I'm not that concerned that he's the third wide receiver on the depth chart at the moment. The other One of the other guys is Robert Woods. Robert Woods is really good. So, so that's where we sit. That was obviously the big deal. They're getting Derrick Henry back. As far as other additions are concerned, uh, are concerned though, let me just take you through what else they did this offseason. The only other guys they added were Demarcus Walker and A.J. Moore from the Texans, Jamarco Jones from the Seahawks, and Trenton Cannon from the 49ers. Robert Woods is really the only addition, and they traded A.J. Brown, as, as well as losing uh, Darrington Evans, who was a backup running back. They lose Roger Saffold, one of their starting offensive linemen, Deontay Foreman, uh, one of their other running backs who filled in at one point last year, Anthony Ferkser, one of their tight ends. I just feel like these odds that you're seeing as we put up here, plus 170 to win the division, 18 to 1 to win the conference, 35 to win the Super Bowl, I just feel like it's getting worse and worse. And the nine win total is at minus 115 to the under the nine win totals minus 115 to the other minus 105 to the over so the betting market isn't strong on it they're a crafty team that is usually able to win games in funky ways but george i feel like the roster has gone in the wrong direction it's strange right uh the nfl is a passing league we all know this right it hasn't been a running back league since what the 90s that's really the last we saw of that it's a passing. They all the rules are for the passing game. They want 30, 35 point, 40 point ball games here. That's right? what they want. They want the overs to hit. The NFL really does. Well, they want that. That's all where the, all the highlights are. But Mike, many teams in the NFL, not just the Titans. I mean, the, the Chiefs. You could argue the Cowboys, the Packers. Either you uh, either you believe in paying the wide receiver, or you do not believe in paying the wide receiver. And right. the teams I just mentioned, seems, uh, seems to me they don't believe in it. The Cowboys, you can make an argument that they traded Cooper for salary cap raisings and because they had other wide receivers they have to worry about. But uh, Adams gone. Tyreek Hill gone. You know, uh, A.J. Brown gone. Uh, Marquise Brown gone. Uh, so you can make that argument there that, you know, they just didn't believe in paying it. But I, I'll say this, Mike. If, he, if Ryan Tannehill doesn't throw that interception against Cincinnati and they beat the Bengals in the playoffs, are we having any of this conversation? It's like this is all over one play because he played poorly in that game, a very bad interception, cost him a chance to uh, to move on to the playoffs. Now he's gone, and now that A.J. Brown's gone, all right? Uh, so strange to me, you know, just uh, all this that's going on here. Uh, you're banking on Terry, uh, Derek Henry, which you literally, literally, you've been doing that anyway. That's why you're the way where your, uh, your bread's been buttered the past couple of years anyway. And I don't think that's wrong. the wrong way to do it. It's old school football, but I, we love Derek Henry. But it's you know, all your eggs are literally in one basket. If Henry goes down again, you're gonna have. A t I know you did it last year, but you're gonna have. A t you don't have AJ Brown this year. You have Robert Woods coming back from surgery, and he's never been a really a true number one anyway. He's always been best when he had a number one on his team, and he was the number two. You know, Traylon Burks. You already mentioned all the problems that he's having this summer, and like you said, I hope he crushes it from here on out. But we don't know that. We don't know that at all. This could be a really trying year for him which is really rough for me since I drafted him number one in my dynasty league. Uh, so, you know, issues there all over the place. 
So I do wonder here, you know, do they do they have a plan, you know, of what's going to happen if, if Henry were to go down? Or if Henry goes down, that's it. House of Cards, everything falls down with it here. So it's a, an interesting squad here as far as what's going on. You don't seem to trust Tannehill. You trade away his number one guy. You, you know, you have question marks behind him as far as what's going to pick up. You know, you got Austin Hooper and Swain at tight ends. But it's not like you have Travis Kelsey there to pick up any slack. You really don't here. So I'm telling you, I mean, it's, for me, this offense is literally, it's like Jenga. And if Derrick Henry goes down, I wonder if that whole thing is coming crashing down behind him. Yeah, I think you made a really interesting point about the playoff game. I think people, because of the close games that the Titans had throughout the playoffs, uh, excuse me, the Bengals had throughout the playoffs, the Super Bowl, the Chiefs game, the Raiders game, I think people forget how wild that Titans-Bengals game was. That game was 9-6, you know, at halftime, and it's a 16-6 game. The Titans score a touchdown, kick a field goal with 15 seconds left. They scored 10 points in a minute and 15 seconds and then still lose the game in regulation. Evan McPherson hits a bomb, 52-yard field goal to walk it off. It was a wild game, and I think you're right. I think sometimes one play, and it often happens, one play changes the entire direction of the franchise, and you made an important point about teams just being dedicated to paying certain positions or not. I think we've seen a lot of teams just decide, you know what, there's so many young accomplished receivers coming into the league. I'd rather have that first rounder that I don't have to break the bank on than pay my receiver that's going to catch 75 passes, $25 million, right? I just think that they teams have made that decision. And I don't think the position is devalued because we did see a lot of wide receivers break the bank, but I do think it's moving generally in the direction of the way running backs moved about 10 years ago in saying, look, I don't think we need to pay big money for this. I think we can find some younger players to do the job at least close to the approximation of what our veterans have been doing. But that being said, Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams and A.J. Brown and other guys did get paid a lot of money this offseason. A lot of big receivers are handed contracts. Cooper Cup, too, who obviously deserved it. So uh, so that's kind of where we're at. now. My my macro feeling on the Titans is that for four years running, they're the worst team to bet on in the entire league. Uh, I get them wrong all the time uh, from a week-to-week basis. Against the spread, they're a terrible team to bet on. They're bad as favorites. They're good as underdogs. They're just a hard team to figure out. And even from season to season, they were the number one seed, George. Uh, nobody had that. Nobody had that. And a couple of years ago... They doink a, a, a la, the last play of the regular season, they doink a field goal to go in against the Texans when I thought the Colts might actually win the division. It's really just a wild team to watch. Uh, and I don't feel comfortable ever, or at least for the last few years, betting them. And I think nine is probably a good number. They are, I think, I like Vrabel as a coach, he coaches aggressively. They have enough talent defensively and with Derrick Henry to scrape out nine wins. But I'm a hard Colts division winner better this year. And I think, could they make the playoffs? The only other thing we have to put, make the playoffs is minus 110 in either direction. So the, uh, the market is telling you what I'm telling you. Maybe. I mean, maybe they could make it as a 9 and 18. But that's sort of where I'm at. I don't, I don't feel much more confident than that. I think Tannehill is headed in the wrong direction, and I think your Derrick Henry props that we talked about in the first hour are what you have an opportunity to hit. That's your over. Here, I'm laying off the Titans. Too tough a team to call. Talk about the Colts next. past six weeks here a plus 360 price Jordan Alvarez here of the Houston Astros a plus 550 number Mike Trout 12 to 1 Pete Alonzo the polar bear at 14 to 1 now if we take a look at the overall standings here they were the odds Judd's got 30 home runs 
Kyle Schwarber, 27. Alvarez, 26. Trout, 23. Obviously, the leader in the clubhouse is Aaron Judge, and he should be here. He's having a wonderful summer. Only on SportsGrid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The morning after. Almost feels, Jim, at times we are already seeing a two-team race for the American League pennant. Who do you think could be that third team to challenge either Houston or New York? The Astros and the Yankees, my numbers do agree. Those are the best two teams in baseball, not just the American League. But yep. I think if I had to pick a third team, I'd probably lean towards the Rays just because there is a lot of upside in the players that they have. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on sports. We're back here we are talking the Colts George kicked off the hour by saying that he thinks the Colts should be a pretty significant favorite they are a significant favorite right now to win the division and you really can't see any other way that this division shakes out other than the Colts winning it uh, we can always talk about injuries or things going sideways but right now they're minus 125 to win the division this is on FanDuel uh, they are minus 175 to make the playoffs. No is a plus 140. To win the conference, 12 to 1. To win the Super Bowl, 22 to 1. I'll just say, I do think, George, that while I wouldn't say that they're better than the Bills or even the Chiefs at this moment, I think the Colts are a top four team in the conference, and I think they'll be there divisional weekend that that's my assessment of where they'll be now it'll take more in in order to get there but 12 to 1 to win the conference yeah it's a little bit of a long shot but I don't think it's crazy crazy things happened in the AFC last year and why not the Colts I'll pose it to you like that why can't they do it uh I think the guy I guess the reason why is the passing game. I, it's just not there to compete with these teams right now. Once again, the running game will travel, right? John Taylor will travel. Should make him a threat anywhere here uh, to play in Buffalo, to play in Kansas city. Assuming they have to, I mean, there's a chance they can be the, there is a chance that they can be the home field advantage team, right? That you do have Houston and Jacksonville in your division. Theoretically, that's four wins you should have there. 
You split with Tennessee, you're five one your own division. That's a long way towards getting home field. Remember, only one team gets the home field throughout the playoffs now, uh, through the seventeenth making it. So uh, I think that'd be immense, by the way, for them if they could uh, get the home field. But um, like, the reason why I don't think they can beat that team is purely because, as I like Matt Ryan, I think he's an upgrade over Wentz, but the passing game's just not there. It's just not there where with these other teams. And we all know in today's NFL, it is about the pass. Again, you need to be able to score points because, once again, when I'm playing the Colts, I'm, I'm stacking. You know, I am I may get burned by Matt Ryan, but I don't think he can do it over and over to me. But I'm not letting Jonathan Taylor control this game. I'm just not. But then again, you could also say, it's, you know, can you, you know if, I, even if I give Jonathan Taylor 120 yards, is that going to be enough to beat me? Not going to be enough. Maybe not. You know, so maybe it's up to that defense. If the defense can also fall for us, uh, the uh, opposing offenses to give that ball up. Maybe that changes how they want to play there. So I think, I think they're a good team. I'm not going to argue with your top four. I think it could very well be true. I certainly think Buffalo is better. Maybe Baltimore. I think Baltimore doesn't get enough love because of all the injuries they had last year. A lot of turmoil there going on with Lamar Jackson and his contract situation. You know, you mentioned KC. I don't know how good a team KC is in without Tyreek Hill. Uh, you know, Denver. Uh, Chargers could be... Chargers could be a great team, but they always see the Charger Raiders as well. So I'm not going to argue with your top folks. I think it, uh, you may you may be a little light there if they can take care of business in their own division. They're going to be a team. I mean, really, uh, something like the Cowboys. You you better get past Wild Card Weekend. Anything less than Divisional Weekend, I think, is a very disappointing season. All right, cool. So we're on the same page there, and uh, I'm not saying that they'll be. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that's where they'll be. I think that's the benchmark for them. Regular season wins is 10, minus 115 to the under, minus 105 to the over. Their schedule shapes up with at Houston, at Jacksonville, starting it out. So two road games, but divisional opponents. Uh, Then they play KC and then Tennessee. So three divisional games in the first four with uh, the Chiefs uh, in there. Then at Denver, Jacksonville, at Tennessee, Washington, at New England, at the Raiders, Philly and Pittsburgh, both at home, at Dallas, late bye week, week 14. Then at Minnesota, the Chargers, at the Giants, in Houston. So they're playing the NFC East, and they are playing the AFC uh, West, which uh, obviously a tough division. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. You mentioned the passing game. Let me just tell you who they added. They did add rookie Alec Pierce in the second round out of Cincinnati. They did not have a first-round pick. Uh, Jelani Woods, tight end from Virginia. He's massive. He's like 6'7", 260. Uh, Bernard Raymond, offensive tackle out of Central Michigan. Nick Cross, safety out of Maryland. As far as their additions, an interesting one uh, beyond Matt Ryan, which is obviously the massive addition. Yannick Ngakwe on the edge. And another interesting, Stephon Gilmore too, obviously an aging player, but still a talented player, is Philip Lindsay. I know that his career has gone went sideways last year because he got caught in this Miami team with six running backs there and he didn't get a lot of touches. But he's still a rel- he, he's still relatively young in his NFL career. And they utilize Naeem Hines. I, the reality, George, is they don't have a lot of depth of pass catchers. I'm a big fan of Michael Pittman, if for no other reason that the Colts love him. He had a big numbers last year with Carson Wentz, and I think he's going to have even bigger numbers. But the rest of the receiving core is Alec Pierce, who I just mentioned, and Paris Campbell, a former second-round pick that has not been able to stay healthy but is wildly talented with Mo Ali cox at tight end. Naeem Hines, Jonathan Taylor, Phillip Lindsay, three guys that can catch passes out of the backfield. I just wonder if the passing offense looks a little funky but still has enough guys to make explosive plays in the mix. That's that's sort of my path to figuring out how the passing game can be utilized more effectively. Maybe it's Jonathan Taylor in the backfield with a Lindsey or Hines out there as well in the slot, something like that. Does that make any sense at all? Uh, I mean, they, they'll hit plays. I mean, they do have some explosive players. They will hit plays. But this is a team where if you take away probably any one of those three guys, I mean, every team, you lose your starting quarterback, you're screwed. But Ryan's one yeah, of the three. Yeah. You take away Jonathan Taylor, done. You take away Pittman, done. Any one of those three, and this team is done. You know, and that, that's the problem for them. 
Uh, there's not a lot of depth without, without behind those three stars. The defense is good, but it's not 2,000 Ravens good. You know, where they're going to keep teams yeah. you know, 11, 12, 13 points. They're not quite that. I like the team. I do. But it's bad that for everything to go the way they want it to go, everything has to stay perfect. I said, Ryan has to have that. He has to be better than Wentz from last year, which we, I think we both think he will be. John Taylor has to be that running back. Once again, I think most, most everybody thinks he is. And Pittman needs to take that next step. Yes, it would be great. You mentioned Paris Campbell. If he could tell, finally be that guy. If Alex Pierce can be that guy real quick. You know, get that set, uh, that other guy that you need here. Moelle Cox is, not you know, your average tight end here. Jelani Woods, yeah, yeah they went up to him. We'll, we'll see uh, what happens there. But I think that's my worry about this team is that they are really dependent on that those top three. Those top three better play like those like top three. If not, you know, they're not going to get very far here in a loaded AFC. Paris Campbell is if you're looking for a late round flyer in deep leagues, um, you, you should take a shot at Paris Campbell. Because if he does stay healthy, he's got a much better quarterback. You know who the Colts' backup quarterback is right now, by the way? George? I'm sorry, what would you say? You know who the Colts' backup quarterback is this year? Who's yeah, I mentioned Matty it Ice? earlier. Oh, I'm not, not okay, going to say the name ever again, but I, I mentioned it earlier. The man who only Nick seems Foles. to play well in one team, and it's not Indianapolis. So Nick Foles is their backup. Obviously, the Frank Wright connection there uh, gives Foles a landing spot there. But – I just feel like Campbell is the type of guy that if it all sort of works out for him and he's able to stay healthy, I do think working with Matt Ryan, there's been good reports out of camp about Paris Campbell. Health has really been his issue. So we'll see if he can stay on the field. And I do like him as a late round flyer, deep leagues. I, I really like Pittman as well. It's a matter of where you get him in your fantasy drafts. And I know we don't do a ton of fantasy talk on here, but it's worth talking about when it comes to this offense. It's not just ending at Jonathan Taylor, albeit uh, he is a huge uh, part of it. So, look, I, I think I would take a shot. At, I think I will take a shot at them on 12-1 to 1 to win the conference. Uh, defensively, I do like a lot of the players that they have. Quiddy Pay is obviously now in year two. DeForest Buckner there. They, they landed the big trade a couple of years ago or going into last year. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe, I just mentioned Bobby, uh, Darius Leonard, Bobby Okariki at the linebacker position. They add uh, Stephon Gilmore. I do think they have a really talented team. Is it blow you away, number one seed type of talent? I don't know. Uh, the schedule has some pitfalls, but if you're, if you're asking me right now, are they an 11-win team? I would say yes. It's probably right there. I think they're 11-6. and six. I would take the over if pressed. I don't think it's one of my best bets, but I do like them. They were, they were a 9-win team last year, George, and we would have talked all throughout the year about what a mess they were. They were 9-6. They were uh, yeah, 9-6, and six, and they lost to the Raiders and the Jaguars to close out the season. It was all right there for them. It was the end of the Wentz era there, and that loss to the Jaguars and Raiders sealed it. He also sealed a couple of other losses for them in very winnable games. So I'm over on the Colts' uh, 10 wins. Looking at their schedule now, they play the AFC West. Boy, that's fun. Uh, you know, a joy there. And they also play the NFC East, which I guess is better. You do get Philadelphia and uh, Dallas, but you get the Giants and Washington as well. But they're better uh, than the Raiders. On this. They should be yes, better than I, the Raiders. And they should be better than it's, Denver it's or the LA. Yeah. It's at the Raiders and it's at Denver. You know, so that's not, that's a problem. You know, I, I can't see winning both those games. You know, so I think they're right around that 10, 11 win mark here. I, I can't bet the over. I can't do that. And I'm not going to bet them to go to the, con, you know, to win the conference either. I don't care what the 12 to 1. I just don't think they're the best team in the AFC. I think that once again, I think that is the, the Buffalo Bills. So I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put too much money on the futures on that. Uh, future bets, I got to be pretty sure. I'm not pretty sure about the Colts. Yeah, understood. I, I think the Bills are going to win the conference too. I'm just saying, if we're looking for some longer shots, I think the Colts are an interesting one. We'll come back, talk about some serious long shots, the Jags and Texans. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Well, boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The Bostonian versus the book. Staff, an extra person when Hawaii was at home. Oh. on the island when they would play those Saturday night games you know it was it was singled out right it wouldn't start here till the degenerate nine or special 10. it's the degenerate special it's the get right game of the get right games I mean it's always just, screw Monday Night Football Hawaii football late night is the get right game of the entire weekend the Bostonian versus the book betting above the rim well what happens folks if Sabrina goes down what happens if she gets hurt down the stretch? That team torpedoed. Remember, folks, her rookie season, they got off to a decent start. She rolled her ankle. I don't even know if they won a game the rest of the season. So I'm telling you this right now, folks. When you look at this market, the play should be Sabrina Inescu to win the WNBA MVP. Betting above the rim. Sports Fest Ricardo inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Women entering sports books more than ever before. 4.5 million increase overall year over year, and about 115% increase in women entering the sports book. Men still outnumber women 250%, but women are making up ground. Some say they're placing their husbands or their boyfriends bets. That's not really true when you look at it empirically. More and more women sports fans are getting into the game and putting their money up to be able to generate some significant income. And FanDuel has generated more uh, women entries than ever before, 1.7 million, and the number continues to rise. So look for betting on all sports across the board. Ironically, you'll see the women in the same number as female sponsorship products, football first, basketball second. It follows a familiar trend. Sports professor Rick Hart. All right, George, good times here with the bo bottom half of the AFC South division. Uh, for years, this division has been nice. funky, right? The It was called the AFC Soft for years when the Texans were winning it. Other teams couldn't get out of their own way. Now the Colts and the Titans are on the top of the division, and the Jaguars' one solid season seems like a very distant, is a very distant memory. But let's set it up for them right now. The Jaguars to win the division, seven to one to win. Let me just do them all right now because uh, their odds aren't great. Uh, let's put up the Jaguars board, everyone. So uh, the Jaguars to win the division are seven to one. Their win total is six and a half. The under is minus one thirty. The over is plus one ten. So we're getting into their schedule and everything else later. But here's the rest of their odds: one thirty to one to win the Super Bowl, 65 to win, to win the conference. To make the playoffs, yes, is plus 450. And like I said, the win total, minus 130 to the under. Now, George, uh, by the way, one thing on to be careful of, on just a sort of PSA, one thing to be careful on, on, on DraftKings, we did the rushing totals earlier. The columns aren't consistent. There's not all unders on the left and all overs on the right. I just need you to know that because when I was going through it, if you're clicking on there, 
and you're on a PC and you're just clicking around and like, I'm going to take care of my rushing props today. And you want to bet a couple of overs, a couple of unders, just stop and pause and make sure you're betting the right thing. Um, it's worth noting as you are going through, uh, we have a tendency on our phones to just click through things and uh, it looks the same everywhere or on our PCs. Just know that, that it's, uh, it looks a little different. The or it's not perfectly organized. All the unders on the left, all the overs on the right. So just know that as you're going into it. So that's my PSA for the day. Uh, your friendly neighborhood tip. But the Jaguars, George. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I'm pretty harsh on them. I always have been, and there's a reason for it because in the last 13 seasons, they have finished with more than eight wins just once. So it's double-digit losses in 10 of the last 11 seasons. The one season they got to the AFC Championship game, lost to the Patriots. Outside of that, it's third and fourth place finishes. They finished in last place in the division four years in a row. Three and 14 last year. We all know the story. Urban Meyer, dumpster fire, fired 11 games in. Now, they bring in Doug Peterson to help Trevor Lawrence and the entire team try to move on from what was a colossal failure. And here's some of the players that they brought in in order to help uh, beyond the coaching staff. They brought in Christian Kirk. We all know they gave him a bunch of money. Brandon Scherf from Washington Commanders. He comes over. Uh, Foyasade Olekun comes over from the Falcons as a a linebacker. Evan Ingram at tight end. Um, Zay Jones comes in as a wide receiver. Darius Williams comes over a corner. They spent in free agency above and beyond what they did in the draft, which was the number one pick in the draft. They drafted Trayvon Walker. They traded, uh, they, they came up in the first round for Devin Lloyd, a linebacker out of Utah and then a few other players to assist as well. So you can make the argument that these first round draft picks plus about five impact free agents, six maybe, they really are starting to change the face of the team. Do you think it's enough to get them to compete, to get over the six and a half wins, to try to compete for a playoff spot in what is a team with obviously some talented pieces, Etienne, James Robinson, Trevor Lawrence. There you go. Have at it. What do you think of the Jags? Well, I'm willing to throw out last season. All right, that was a that was a nightmare under Urban Meyer. That was just bad all the way around. He was not an NFL coach. Hell, I'm not sure he's any kind of coach last year. All right, so I'm going to throw that out. So this is pretty much Trevor Lawrence's rookie season, therefore, right under uh, Peterson. We'll see what he can get done there. But I think he'll be he could be that quarterback he thought he'd be coming out of the draft. Uh, Travis uh, Travis at the end being healthy, of course, is a big bonus. I think he could be that ex- an explosive guy back there, not a three down back, but could be used at some point. Oh, uh, some combination with James Robinson. Uh, did they overpay Kirk? Yeah, they probably pissed off every NFL, every other NFL owner by doing what they did. It, it, this is what the uh, the domino started, right? You paid him all that much money, <laughs> and everyone's like, "You're paying Christian Kirk? What? I want to get paid." And ding, 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 ding. Everybody else had to get paid their money here. So sort of went uh, that line there. But Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, Lavisca Chenault. Although we're hearing a lot of rumors that he could be traded. Laquan Treadwell, another top pick of the uh, wide receiver for the Vikings there. Once again, could be uh, interesting. It's an interesting core, Mike. Uh, to see what could happen. I don't know if they have a true number one there. It seems like they have a lot of twos and threes. So who's going to step up? I don't know if Kirk's going to be that guy. To me, he was always the deep threat guy. You know, blow the roof off the top of the defense, get the safety out of there. That sort of guy. So we'll see what he can become there. But interesting. And if they do trade Chanel, I wonder what they'll get from him. It would seem to be trading low at this point uh, after the year he had last year. And you take over, you know, a Giants disaster of Evan Ingram, who's best known for dropping passes. All right, didn't you trade for Dan Arnold uh, last year as well from Carolina? So it's an interesting mishmash of players here. You know what I mean? It's like, it's sort of like, uh, you know, when you're just picking a team on, on a sandlot. Okay, you, and then every other kid, then you. you yeah, just, just picking players here. I don't know how this is all going to mm-hmm. mesh together as a team. So I think it'll be very intriguing to say the least here. So I don't think they're terrible. I don't. Now, your question was, are they going to reach their win total? I mean, what, what do we think they can do inside the division here? You know, and what's your best case scenario, three and three? I think it's your best case scenario is three and three. You beat Houston twice, and maybe you steal a game from Indianapolis or uh, Tennessee there. So, you know, after that, I know you're going to the schedule is not fun uh, for the AFC South, right? I mean, who are you beating here? Can you beat Washington week one? 
It's at Washington. You better if you want to get that over, you better beat them. I'm looking for other winnable games here outside the division. Giants. They've got road games, road games against the Jets, Texans, and Detroit in the last like five, six weeks of the year. They have a bunch of road games, but winnable, t- winnable games. Um, they have to win all their winnable again, games to get it. I, yeah. I mean, to get over six. I mean, I, I'm already giving you three wins of the division, which is probably being nice. Well, you better beat Washington. You better beat the Giants. You better beat the Jets. You better beat Detroit. There's your seven. Anyone think they can beat all those teams? It's unlikely. And so now you're still winning against a good team. Chiefs and right, Chargers who, who, both on the road. Who are the good teams you're going to beat? Philly there? on the road. Philly I mean, on the road. We would say right Dallas. now probably George. We would say right now the Chargers, Philly, Chiefs, Indy are playoff teams, right? And those are all road Chargers, games. Chargers, Phillies, Chiefs, and yes. Obviously they have the Colts you know, in division, but – I don't Those know if they can win any team that I, I, I didn't mention. I love the four teams, uh, I love the division games and the four teams, uh, bad teams that we mentioned. I don't know if they can beat any of the, anybody else. Like I said, I mean, they got to win all their winnable games. I think what you really are hoping for is that these rookies that they drafted, Trayvon Walker, Devin Lloyd, Tyson Campbell from last year, rookie corner, I, I just think they need these young defensive players to be impact players now. Like – no messing around. We got you're right. We got a bunch of number twos on offense, but we have hopefully we've bolstered the offensive line well enough in order to get James Robinson and Travis Etienne out and churning up yards. We're not going to have the most dynamic passing offense, even if we improved it a little bit from a year ago. But these defensive guys have to be impact now. Their stats from last year, I, I, like you said, you almost have to throw everything out. But everything was terrible last year. They scored the least the points. points they allowed the fifth most points. They they turned the ball over like crazy, the most in almost the most in the league. And they had the they forced the least turnovers. They couldn't pick the ball off. They couldn't create any turnovers at all. And I know that is a very a highly variable stat, but I just don't know that they can get there this year. I think this is a multi year plan. I think the organization remains a mess. I think Doug Peterson is an interesting fit because I think he can work with Trevor Lawrence, but I just don't have any faith to get there. I'm not as I, I was a hard under better last year in the Jags. I I sometimes hesitate to run it back, but if you if you force me, I would say this is another under. I'm just not going to necessarily pile on. I haven't kind of made a decision on this one yet, but I, I, I don't see the over happening. We try to sit here and make a case for it. Sometimes we can't, and I think this is one of those cases. I think the schedule's a little too tough for them right now, unless these defensive young defensive players under Mike Caldwell really bring it together and start stopping teams or at least creating turnovers. Let's go over to the Texans. We only got a few minutes left. The Texans, um, surprisingly, were not the worst team in the league. Not the worst team in the division last year. They fired their coach, David Culley, for reasons that are still sort of confusing to us. And yet they find themselves with Lovey Smith with the lowest win total on the board on DraftKings. Under 4.5 is a minus 120. Over 4.5 is plus 100. Uh, let's tell you about the players that they brought in this offseason. Last year they signed 43 free agents. They didn't quite get there this year, but... They're pretty darn close. We got Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison, Deshaun Hamilton. Uh, who else? Marlon Mack comes in. We got Daria Gunboale, just some <laughs> names that you might recognize. No standout players in free agency, George. They lost, obviously, their quarterback in Deshaun Watson. They finally do the trade, but Davis Mills was already the starter. Trod Taylor will be backing him up. Uh, who else did they bring in? Demarcus Walker, an edge rusher. Uh, Terrence Mitchell got smoked so many times at the Patriots and the Chiefs. I don't know that he's actually an upgrade anywhere. Their draft picks are as follows. They got Derek Stingley, the corner, which was a surprise at the top of the draft. Their second uh, first round pick was Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. So trying to bolster that offensive line, obviously. John Mechie, an interesting wide receiver pick out of University of Alabama. So there you go. Brandon Cooks will be there mm-hmm. along with uh, John Mechie and Nico Collins trying to grab passes from Davis Mills with Marlon Mack, Rex Burkhead, and Damian Pierce, the rookie, all trying to run the ball. So 
what do you think? Four and a half. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle. Struggle. I said, we know this is a major rebuild team, right? It's what they're doing with all the picks they got from Cleveland here. There's going to be still a lot of off uh, the field news here as far as the, the Sean Watson thing. They're being sued as well uh, by some of those uh, plaintiffs as far as the Texas knew what was going on, and they did know what was going on. How could they not? Yep. Uh, do, you, do you have a number one quarterback here in Davis Mills? Love the way he played last year. He could certainly make an argument out of all the uh, top quarterbacks. More 300-yard games. All right. He, he was good. He was fun to watch here. Uh, but do you have a number, number one? Will Brandon Cooks eventually be traded at some point? Really surprised he's still on the team uh, with them. But this is a major, major work in progress. All right. In some ways, I don't think they want to win yet, right? You want to get as many top picks as you can get. You're not ready to compete yet. I think you know that. I think in, well, teams in all sports realize that. You either want to be good, competing for a trophy, or you want to suck. We you're just getting those top picks yet. Being in the middle is not good. I'm a Cowboy fan. Not good. You don't want to be in the middle. Terrible. Or really, really good. They're terrible. Under. Yeah, and last year they were awful, and they still ripped off uh, four wins. The year before that, they had four wins. So we might be headed towards a third four-win or less season. And I'll get your thoughts on Lovey Smith as we uh, wrap up in hour number two here. Uh, but I, I don't really know how they can get to five wins. I had them under last year. I'll have them under again going into 2022. We'll wrap up after the break with Mike and George. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Betting above the rim. When you look at Summer League Futures, everybody, you want to look at teams that are going to play their young kids and give them big minutes, okay? And sometimes the teams that are playing second-year guys minutes as well that need more seasoning. That's why you see a team like Detroit is the favorite right now. But the team I'm looking at right now, Indiana at 10-1. to 1. Betting above the rim. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
All right, closing out the show. Thanks for watching Football Full Circle today. Follow us on Twitter at SportsGrid TV, at SportsGrid. George is at George Kurtz. I'm at Mike Blewett. Uh, to Brittany and Jack for helping behind the scenes today. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, great job with the graphics and Botch on the updates. We appreciate it. So, uh, George, we talked about the Texans. Uh, obviously, their long shots, longest shot in the league to win their division at 30 to 1. Super Bowl conference doesn't really matter. It's really win total. You think they can get over four and a half or not? And also, Davis Mills, 3,700 on passing yards, 21 and a half on passing touchdowns. You liked what he was able to do last year. He's got no competition. Kyle Allen is his backup. I said to Rod Taylor earlier, I meant to say it was previously there. He's now with the Giants. So what do you think? Uh, Davis Mills, give me his his props. You like him? I do like him. It's not that I love Davis Mills. I'm not so sure they have their quarterback of the future on the roster, but he has no competition behind him. Kyle Allen, I mean, Driscoll, uh, he doesn't play tight end, whatever's going on there. He's the quarterback. You know, they're going to be trailing in all these games. They're going to have to throw the football. Right? His, well, whatever his interception props might be over as well here. Give me the overs. Going to have to throw the ball. They don't, not like they have like some great running game where that's going to take the pressure off from them. No, they're going to have to throw the ball left, right, 35, 40 times a game. I'll take the over with Mills here, assuming he stays healthy. Pep Hamilton, the new offensive coordinator there to work with Davis Mills. That's interesting. I do not understand the Levy Smith hire. You see the odds right there. 250 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. 130 to 1 to win the conference. Uh, replacing David Culley with Levy Smith makes no sense to me. I think that George is right. This is a multi year rebuild, and we're still in the middle of it. Uh, the, the talent from, from this year to last year, you'd like to see. Uh, a big improvement, but it's not much there. John Mechie, I think, is a really nice piece that they added. Uh, but I think this is Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks getting passes from Davis Mills when they're getting blown out. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>